Good afternoon, friends. My name is Abhay Tripathi. I'm part of 4G planning team. Um, today is 2nd October and today we are going to talk about the uh, CSFP delay which happens in a 4G to 2G network and what, the, what is the time taken, etc. Okay. So before I begin on something, I'll uh, describe the setup so that uh, it is clearly understood in what scenario we are talking of this delay. So the setup we have got is we are going to analyze the log file which is from our TNC network. Uh, it's a POC trial setup that we have got there. Um, so in the setup we are going to use 2G node B and a 4G node B. 2G node B is from Huawei and 4G node B is E node B is also from Huawei. We are incidentally using a LAMP site uh, but you can consider it for all practical purposes. It will be similar for a macro E node B as well. This uh, E-Node B is then connected to MME uh, and P Gateway, which is of ZT in, in Bangalore. Uh, and we've got local HSS and, uh, and uh, MSS in, the, um, in, uh, in Chennai, uh, and that is from Huawei. So uh, we are using the uh, 5 megahertz LT uh, band 3. Uh, and for 2G, we are using the 1800 uh, TRXs that we've got. For the purposes of test, both MT, uh, MO and MT, we are using the Huawei mobile. It's a P7 mobile with uh, with engineering uh, hands, uh, engineering firmware on it. Now, this same setup, we are going to look uh, on the probe file. So, uh, what I have got here is a Huawei uh, drive test tool called Probe. Uh, this probe has the capability of uh, recording the log file as well as uh, you know replaying the log file. So uh, because there is a there's two UEs, mobile one and mobile two. So this message window is for mobile one and this is for mobile two. This can be signified by looking here. So in this setup, uh, MS1 is the originating uh, UE and uh, MS2 setup is the uh, terminating UE. So, uh, you know, MS1 when it presses the call button after dialing number when it presses the calls uh, call button the UE originate UE sends a message to E node B which is called ESR extended service request once I click open this you will find in this the service type is mobile originating CS fallback so it is known that mobile is requesting a CS fallback service this message when it is received by e node b uh, the e node b also talks to mme uh, about this uh, cs fallback scenario uh, and then once a decision is made to release the ue um, on the respective 2g or 3g uh, network based on the configuration um, you know uh, e node b will send the rrc connection release an important thing to note in this rrc connection release is that you know it says which carrier does the UE needs to be redirected to. Now, because we need to be mindful of the fact that UE has originated a voice call, so it's got to be done quickly. In this case, a specific ARFCN has been given, 633, and it is said that which network it is. So it is a GRAN network, which is a GSM network, and the corresponding details of those have been provided by the uh, um, inode V to the, uh, to the UE. So with this, UE now knows that which in, uh, which ARFCN it has to go to. It tunes its receiver so that it receive it quickly gets onto the 2G network, and then originate the CM service request, which is like a regular 2G, uh, uh, you know, 2G service uh, which uh, mobile does, and then it goes through the regular process of IMEI checks, CM service, and then setup message will contain the. Uh, will contain the number which has been dialed. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it is like a regular voice calls up at, as it will happen in 2G. Now, thing to note is when the call proceeding is happening between setup and call proceeding on the terminating side, if you want to look at this, look at the timestamp 4934. 4934419 is the time when U, so UE2 is also receiving the information, which is the uh, terminating side that yes, uh, there is a there is a call which is coming for it. So E node B gives a, a direct transfer message to the UE. Uh, U node B um, UE then responds to the E node B. And if you look in the service type, mobile terminating CS fallback. Now you recall in the MS one message which I showed you, it was mobile originating. In this case, it is mobile terminating. So we know that this is a terminating uh, terminating uh, voice call which is coming for this UE. 
again because this UE was in 4G so it needs to be redirected uh, so UE2 you will see again that you know it will follow the same process because we have got one ARFC in uh, which is configured for this cell uh, so you know this UE is also getting redirected to uh, 6, uh, 633 now all these are blind redirect so it needs to be one needs to be really careful that the blind redirect frequency should be uh, should be properly mentioned which should be available for all the users so uh, a proper care needs to be taken by the planning team for this once ue is redirected and uh, if you see that uh, you know so after the ue is redirected here uh, ue has responded to the page so hence paging hence this uh, sorry call proceeding and alerting has already happened for the ue ue1 um, UE1 is still in the process so UE1 after connection uh, sorry UE2 after connection release it has to again uh, do the regular thing like setup and alerting so this will be the time when the UE2 receives the call so on um, between alerting and connect is the time when a UE uh, when somebody after receiving a ring acknowledges the ring so connect and connect acknowledges happens there so if somebody has to really look at the call setup delay, we have to look from this time 184931 when the UE1 originated the call to this point which is the alerting or even we can look at connect also for that matter 184939. So it's roughly about 8.5 seconds. Yeah. So that is the time which is typically taken by uh, for a worst case scenario where a 4G UE uh, both the UEs are in 4G and they are trying to call each other. Now this is with no paging repetition which means that you know a page was sent and, and UE acknowledged the page. So uh, this is the typical call flow message which is there when a UE, uh, when a um, you know CS fallback scenario is, brand, is being done. So it's roughly about 8, 8.5 seconds. Now let me look at the um, you know I'll show an excel sheet where uh, we have captured these time delays. So what we have got here is UE1 timings and then UE2 timings, okay? And then what is the time taken by UE1 and UE2? So uh, ESR is extended service request, it came here, then RRC connection release uh, because the 4G, uh, UE is in 4G, so it has to be released. So same in information is here. Then alerting connect acknowledge. So, between this and this for one UE if you look at from connect to connect acknowledge it is roughly about 8.79 seconds or 9.1 you know because we are looking from connect acknowledge normally people look at alerting so if you look at alerting we are roughly of the order of 7.8 right so just under the 8 second and uh, that is roughly about one second higher than uh, you know what a 2G to 2G call would be so 7.8 seconds so 7, 8 to 9 seconds is what we can take for the uh, cs fallback delay so um, next i'll go to what happens when the ue releases the call so after the connect acknowledge has happened uh, by ue2 ue2 was the first one to disconnect uh, the call so it disconnected the call when the call is being disconnected now the care has to be taken that ue was moved because of csfb from a 4g network to a 2g network it immediately has to go to 4G now so that we uh, it can get a better service. So that is taken care by uh, something called a channel release. The, that is the layer three message in GSM. If we open the channel release, you know you'll find here cell selection indicator after release. So the network 2G network 2G BTS or BSC is telling the you know uh, telling the UE that which network it has to go to. In this case, it is saying that it is go to EU Tran and it is giving the ARFCN, um, um, yeah, ARFCN of the um, of the cell where it has to got to go so there has to be uh, you know from 2G to 4G when the user uh, when the mobile is going we have to only define the ARFCN now 5 megahertz ARFCN would be same so uh, we do not need to define PCI in the 2G network while if you recall when we were moving from 4G to the uh, 2G we had to define a specific BCCH frequency uh, for the 2G. So that is the difference. You know, when we are moving from uh, from 2G to 4G, we just need to define an ARFCN and we don't need to define PCI. While in case of, uh, because it's a five megahertz system, while in case when we are moving from 4G to 2G, 
we had to define a specific uh, 2G BCCH carrier. So channel release is done. So at this point now you has to start looking for that specific e EARFCN which it was sent. You can look at from this it start to measure the system information and as soon as UE comes back into the 4G network it has to do a tracking area update. So if you look at it this traffic area uh, the it is a regular TA update uh, request with combined LA and TA right. And then you know the UE goes through the process of connection request, configuration, security mode and then you know TA update accept. So this is the time when UE has come back. The same thing would happen for the uh, UE1 also after the release here you can see the release and releases again to the same ARFCN uh, 1642 the UE comes back and it does the tracking area update and tracking area update accept. Right. So that is the uh, difference which is there. One thing you might notice is between UE1 and UE2 although it has got nothing to do with the CSFB scenario UE1 do not have data on while UE2 had the mobile data uh, mobile data enabled. So the difference between this and this is what you can look at that uh, between tracking area update request. Uh, so you have uh, security mode RRC reconfiguration here tracking area update and that is it right there was no RRC reconfiguration. This RRC reconfiguration in UE2 is there because it has got data enabled. And if we look at it, uh, we must be setting an SRB here. So look, we are setting up a new SRB, which is essentially setting a, de a default radio bearer also, you know, and that default radio bearer uh, uh, EBI 5 is set up because UE has got the data services on. So anybody who has got a data services or a mobile data a switch, which is there in a mobile, uh, mobile configuration, if it is on, then this default bearer will get established. For UEs which uh, which do not have it on, you know, it will just be a TA update. But from a CS fallback perspective, it is a complete process which has been done. So uh, return process is very quick. We can look at this in the uh, in this picture uh, that you know once the UE is disconnected, then there is a channel release which happened in uh, let's say 300 millisecond, and then tracking area update after reading all the SIPs, it takes about another 300 millisecond and TA update uh, accept which is about uh, another uh, 50 odd uh, millisecond. So the total process from disconnect to uh, to uh, UE actually registering in the uh, 4G network is about approximately 700 millisecond and uh, that is quick. So that is what it is called fast redirect. Now um, so um, hopefully this will explain all the um, all the setups that have been done I have captured the same in this PPT here uh, what we need to remember is 8 to 9 second is what it is going to take for a mobile to mobile call uh, from 2G uh, from 4G to uh, 2G CS fallback and another 700 millisecond for one UE to come back so uh, that is all from my side for the CS fallback scenario uh, and we can look at it uh, you know later on I will explain in another uh, video about uh, what happens in case of a USSD. In case there is any question you can always reach me on my on my mobile which is plus nine one nine seven zero two double zero three three four seven and you have my email ID abhay.tripathi at idea.adityabilla.com. Okay. Thanks.